Hello lovely people, I'm K3N and welcome to my channel. Um, in this video I want to make a little book, notebook, journal type thing. Um, I've seen them referred to as a commonplace book and my idea for this is because I'm having so many, um, I've got so much stuff in my brain these days, <laughs> there's not room for it all. So I thought well it would be nice to have a little notebook to write things in, you know like um, words for potato in multiple languages if you watched uh, Monday's video about the earth um, and you know poem quotes, quotes that from books that I read, that kind of thing. So it's going to be a kind of place to write things that I want to remember that I can't keep in my brain. And like I said, it's commonly it's commonly referred to as a commonplace book. Apparently it's been around since the time of Aristotle. Um, if you have a look on YouTube, you'll see many, many different people keeping them in many different ways. Um, and it can be very personal, you know. So um, I've got a few bits and bobs here. Um, there will be editing and stuff like that as I go along. So I try and keep it down to, you know, a reasonable length. <laughs> And because I, I don't exactly have a plan, but anyway. So I've got this old book cover. I had a load of books a while ago from a, um, a junk shop here and um, this text block literally fell out of this cover. But it's a nice size. I want a, a smallish book and I'll only be writing in it, not, you know, putting stitch pieces or anything. Um, but the spine is very, very fragile, especially when you keep doing that to it, Catherine. So I'm going to take that spine out and then I'm going to glue the cover. I've got this bit of upholstery fabric. It's out of a swatch book. Um, maybe I should iron it to get that crease out. It feels really soft. I'm not sure if it's polyester or linen, but anyway, it's nice. But you need something sturdy because my idea is not to put um, any reinforcement in the spine, but just to stitch just through the cloth. So you need upholstery fabric or denim or, you know, something like that. We'll see. And also it's double sided because you'll see all of the inside apart from where the pages go because it's going to get glued onto there like that um, and then you'll see on the outside you'll see that where the spine is unless I decide to glue the spine back on we'll see you know I'm making it up as I go along um, now this this is the oh this is I cut it I cut that much off one side but it was this long so it's just you know just just so um, I've got that, so that's going to be the cover. Um, I've got some papers. Um, because it's for writing, I've gone for sort of plainish papers, you know, not, not fancy decorated papers. So this is just some squared paper that I've tea dyed, two different kinds. Um, this is a kind of graph paper. This is what the children write on at school here, so I rescued some of these out of the back of... Um, one of Lily's school books, you know, where she hadn't written on them. I didn't ask her. I hope she doesn't mind. Shh, don't tell her. Um, so I've got some of that and some of that. I've got some... Um, I save sort of bits out of my own sketchbooks or things I've written on or whatever. So I've... And I tea dye them. So there's some... It's got stuff on, but you can write over it in black pen. So I want, you know, like I said, I want to be able to write in it. But I didn't just want a whole book of just plain white pages. That would be boring for me. If you want to do a whole book of plain pages, you go for it. So there's offcuts. There's some very pale rust prints um, that I did with the lemon juice. Um, that's a bit of handmade paper. Uh, that's another bit of handmade paper. Um, I, you know, I like it to look interesting, even if I'm only writing. Um, these are all from the aforementioned old books and these are like the end papers, you know, so they're, they're blank pretty much. Some of them, I mean that's got writing on one side but that side's blank and that's rag paper. If it's sort of pre-mid 19th century then it's generally rag paper. That was inserted in a book. It's got someone's, oh sorry, head butted you. Sorry, I'm standing up and you know, not used to it, haven't done it for a while. Excuse me for head butting you. Yeah, that's got someone's handwriting on in French. They're all, you know, books I got here in France. But it's blank on the back, so I thought that would be nice in there. And I can either write over this person's handwriting or just leave that and write there or, you know, whatever. That um, is a title page and it's blank on the back. Um, and yeah, all these others, some of them have got, that's got a picture on one side, but it's blank. So just paper, just get some paper, basically, whatever you've got. Um, 
I don't know, I keep getting this out to use and then putting it away again because I don't really like the yellow. In fact, I should try tea dyeing it, shouldn't I? Maybe I'll do that. Also end pages. Um, these papers, if you've watched the Natural Dyeing with Onion Skins video that I did recently, um, the dye bath that was left was the, pretty much the pigment was all gone. With Onion Skins, um, it doesn't really keep on giving and giving. But I put rusty iron in to get that dark olive green that I showed you. And so all I did was just warm it back up again, you know, the dye bath, and I just dipped all these papers in. Um, so it's it's coloured, it's different to tea, you know, if you compare that to the tea dyeing. Um, and that one there at the bottom is quite dark actually. So it's just a different natural colour. So, you know, you can use spent dye baths for that if you have such a thing as spent dye baths lying about the place. Get the last bit of colour out of them. That one's actually really cool because I think I've probably layered another piece over it when they were drying and it's left a... Anyway, so papers, different papers. So I'm going to start with the cover um, and because that will need glue in and then the glue will have to dry. Um, and I'm going to just get this spine off. Now if you're not, you know, a journal maker or a junk journaler or whatever and you're you're afraid of, or not afraid of, but you know, you don't like having seeing books cut up. I absolutely had that the first time I did it. Excuse me, I need scissors. Not the big fiskers, where are the paper scissors? There they are. Um, trained as a librarian, you know, lover of books and all that. But when you realise that over 90 million books per year end up in landfill, not even recycled, and I always check if I get something that looks a bit special, that it's not, you know, a first edition or of something or whatever. It's, I don't know whether to do this with this or rotary cut it now. Mm, I'm scared. <laughs> See, it still, still makes me question. I'm going to just cut it because it's going to have a raggedy edge and I'm probably going to have to do something to make it more pretty. I'm just cutting the spine out. It, yeah, I've done this now. Sorry if my head comes in. I've done this now. I don't know how many times. I've made several journals of different kinds of old, from old books, as witnessed by my stack of different book pages. So there's the spine. Um, and it still makes me go, Ooh. although I can rationalise it, like I said. Um, so now I'm looking at this edge here, is it pretty enough? Can I do anything with it? Is it sturdy enough? You know, it's very, very worn and old this, but it's basically a little notebook for writing in. Um, I think I do want to put something over the edge of it. I'm not exactly sure what, but I need to do that before I glue it down. Let's just have a look. So if that's my bit of cloth, which I do need to iron, um, let's get it the right way up how it was. So that will go there, and that will go there. So probably what I'll do is inside, you see where the, um, these pieces end, I think they're called end papers, I'm not sure. I'll just, I'll have it like that so that little marbling bit shows, and like that. Um, so then my spine will end up slightly wider. Do you see? Do you see? Do you see? Do you get the vague idea? And then I'll, uh, that, because I'm limited by my bit of cloth. If you didn't want to be limited by your bit of cloth, you can go and make your paper signatures, decide how many pages you want. You've got a bigger bit of cloth, you can make your spine, you know, however wide you want to accommodate it. I'm not. I've only got this one bit of cloth that I'm insisting on using. <laughs> so that's dictating my, um, my spine. So it'll be like that. I'll sew my pages through here, and then I may or may not decide to glue this back on afterwards. I'll see. I'm not sure if that will look weird. Um, but I do want to cover these edges. That was, um, let's have a look for something. I'll just grab out my lace basket. Is there anything here? It needs to be quite thinnish. don't want anything too sturdy. And I might, might choose something now and then decide later to glue it, you know, decide to glue it on later. You know, that might be quite nice. And that's long enough. And it's see-through. Hmm. I don't know. 
Um, no, I think I want something that will wrap round more. Just excuse me a moment. <clears throat> yeah, I think I'm going to use a bit of this rust printed stuff. So I need two strips. Is that going to be big enough that way? Ho ho ho, just. So if I get one strip off that edge, I'm going to go about... I want a little bit to show on the front, sort of maybe there-ish. And then enough to wrap around the back, so probably a good inch, maybe an inch and a quarter. I'm going to tear it so I get roughly straight. And then pick the nicest edge to be on the outside. And then I'm just going to glue it on. So let's do it in half. That seemed to have been just the right size by chance, by luck. More by luck than judgment. It's actually slightly too long. So I'm going to just get one piece the right length. Again, I'm just doing it with my finger, you know, if you want to measure and be all accurate, then go for it. I want to tear carefully because it's a short length and the, the other, whether it's the warp or the weft that you're tearing on the other thread can pull out of true. So that will get glued there. And I'm going to do the same with this one. If you don't have old book covers laying about the place, um, you could just get a piece of a couple of pieces of cardboard, you know, put a piece here to show you in case you don't know what cardboard looks like. Well, this is the kind that comes on the back of sketchbooks, so it's quite sturdy. Actually, it's not as sturdy as some are. Um, and then you could decorate, you could cover it with fabric, you could make a stitch piece and, and cover it. Um, you could do paper collage, you know, you could do anything. Anything at all. Stick pictures on it, which is basically collage, isn't it? Um, just make yourself two covers. But I like the look of old books and I like the idea that <clears throat> what it's what it looks like on the outside is not what's on the inside, if you see what I mean. So I need to glue this. Um, so I'm going to just glue that on there like that and then fold it over and glue it down on the inside. So I'm going to go and do that off camera because <laughs> gluing. <laughs> No, the trouble is I can't see without headbutting the lamp. So you don't need to watch me do that. I'm going to go and do, glue those two pieces on like that. And then I'm going to glue these two boards onto my bit of cloth. Um, and then I'm going to come back and show you my papers. Okay, so I've done my gluing. Um, I just had a look back at the first bit of video. Sorry for the shadow. I've turned the, the big, I had the big light on because it's a bit dark in here. Um, so anyway, I've turned it off. So hopefully that's better. So I've glued um, my two little strips. Do you see that? Do you see? Do you see? And I've glued my book boards to the bit of linen-y stuff which I ironed with a hot iron and it didn't melt. I didn't think that it might be polyester. So I think it is linen. But anyway, um, so that's all done. And just to make sure I had it right, I sort of judged how wide the spine would be. And it's about an inch, it's an inch and three quarters. And I cut myself a little bit of cardboard just to space them, you know, when I glued them so that they were straightish, not to cattywampus. So I shall set that aside to, oh, before I set that aside to dry, I'm going to have a little measure um, to see how big my biggest page can be. So it's about, f it's four and three eighths wide. And I'd like my pages to be a little bit inside. So if I say four and a quarter wide, maximum, by, and it's six and seven eighths long. So if I say six and six and a half maximum, is that going to be too short? No, let's go six and a half ish by four and a quarter ish maxi maxi. So the first thing I do, um, just put that over there, excusing me, is get a bit of paper that size folded. Um, so let's take this bit. So if I fold it. Uh, actually 
do it. If I get it six that way, it was me overthinking. What did I say? Six and a half, didn't I? So if I go to there on that line, that handy dandy line of, um, and I always like to tear. Just you know, I've got this metal ruler with the that you know that, so you can tear nicely. And then if I do that in half and measure it, and then I don't need to do any more measuring once I'm sure. Yeah, that's four and a. Sorry, I have to bring it up to my eyes. <laughs> Sorry, talk amongst yourselves. That's about four and an eighth. So they could be slightly bigger than that, but not much. So I can use that one even though it's smaller. Doesn't mind if I don't mind if I have some smaller. Um, so keep that as my template. So all I'm going to do now is go through my other bits. I mean that's obviously smaller, so I can just fold it and do some folding. Um, this one. See then once you've got your template, you don't have to measure every one. You can just check does it fit within the parameters. Yes, it does. Go for it. Folding, folding, um, and I keep them sort of, you know, roughly in their types because then I like to make the signatures and I'll, I'll come back and make one once I've done some folding just to show you my process. That's a bit of tea dyed, get my template. Yes, that, that fits fine. Um, so yeah, so I'll go away and I'll do some folding. What I might do as well if I've got a piece that's too long, isn't that too long? No. If I had a piece, that I'm trying to find a piece that's too long. <laughs> Those are bigger. <coughs> so if I had a piece that's too long, instead of cutting it, what I'm what I do sometimes as well is um, get one side the right size and then fold this in. So then you can flip that out and write there or, you know, whatever. So I'm going to go away and do that and then I'll come back when I've folded a good few and I'll show you how I make a signature. Okay, so I've done my folding. I've probably got way more papers than I need. Um, in my mind I'm thinking I might have seven signatures because, like I said, there's no need to leave room for sticking things in or putting fabric in or anything so I can cram them in. So what I do now is I'm just going to go round my you know, individual stacks which are vaguely sorted into types so that the signatures vary. Um, I wouldn't want to go one, two, three, four in the same order every time because then every signature will be the same. But, you know, it's all up to you. So from a first page, hmm, it's always the first that's the first and the last. It's the same when choosing cloth scraps. I think I'm going to take a bit of this. This was the onion dyed sketchbook. And I left these on, they're going to crumble and disintegrate and bits are going to fall out, but I like them. And I didn't want to cut it, so I folded. You know, I trimmed it that way and then folded. So I think that will be my first page, except I think I want to put this around it, this little piece of precious handwritten, whatever it was, um, like that. Um, so then I'm just going to go around taking randomly from each pile and I like to like am I in shot I need to come a bit nearer that way I like to put some like this some like that some in the middle you know just mix it up a bit um, again that's all up to you so I'm, I might put that one right down at the bottom and then I might take a, that bigger one and put that sort of ish central I mean if this bothers you just make them all the same size and line them up it's all personal choice um, this one Again, I'll put it middle-ish. Uh, I'm just trying to vaguely remember which ones I've used and which ones I haven't. Um, I might put a smaller one there. doesn't really matter because you can't really count pages when you've got all different papers because there'll be different thicknesses. And it, it's. I think it's more important, to me at least, that the signatures are sort of the same thickness. They can't be too thick because they'll be really hard to pierce through. And I've lost count of how many I've put in there. Um, but I just said it didn't matter, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> have a bit of that in the middle. Um, oh, did I put one of those? I don't think. Did I? I don't know. So I just do that and then I have a little feel. It's quite nice to have that picture in the middle. It doesn't feel too thick. 
So I'll just call that OK for number one. And I'll just put you know a giant paper clip on it just to keep it for now. And then I'll do the next one. And now I might start with a different outer cover for the signature. You won't see when it's bound where the signatures begin and end very much because it's not you know a junk journal or a stitch journal where you need to leave big gaps everywhere. But I'm just looking what paper looks nice to what when I open it you know I'll, will I like the look of that? Yes I think I will. If I've got a raggedy edge and a cut edge just you know it's purely subjective decisions that you make as you go along. Um, but remembering to keep yourself like you couldn't that that's the biggest size I can have so I can't go like that do you see what I mean so it has to stay within the bounds of that so I'm just going to go away and make seven of these um, and then I shall come back and um, do the whole making let's have that that's the title page of Uncle Tom's cabin but in French um, and um, then I'll do the whole making and then we'll, sorry I got distracted by reading <laughs> I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll do all the folding I'll make all the signatures and then I'll come back <laughs> okay so I've made my signatures I've ended up with seven nine was over ambitious um, there's about ten folios a folio is a double page you know folded in each one so that's 74 folios in total so you get four sides you know one two three four per folio so what's that 280 sides that should hold quite a lot of um, you know facts and information so that's how it looks if I just let it relax um, if I put it in my cover which is now dry it more or less sits flat can you see it slightly gapes but I think that's more because the pages are not smooth. <laughs> I'm hoping that once I've sewn them in and I put a, a weight on it, do you see if I squidge it, it will be straight. I mean, if you don't mind it like that, do it like that. But, you know, I wanted it to look reasonably reasonable. Um, I might make some kind of tie for it. I'm not sure yet. I might just tie something around it. I might not. So now I need to mark my spine for stitching and I need to pierce my signatures. OK, so I've got my template, which is the same height as my signatures and the same width as my spine. And I've made marks, mine's square paper, so I just used the squares, but you could draw lines if you didn't have square paper. Because I'm going to have seven signatures, I made one mark in the center, three stations, three sewing stations. And then I spaced three more each side to give me seven in total. And then I've punched holes through my template with my awl into my Amazon mat. Um, and now I'm going to lay that on there and I've got that in the gap behind so that I make sure I'm straight but I can kind of feel where the um, you know where the bookboards end and then with my blue pen you know the kind that comes away when you put water on you hope um, you could also probably use a normal pencil if you just had a light coloured fabric or maybe a white pencil if you had a dark coloured I'm just going to make a dot in each hole so I can see where to stitch pale blue dot. Those of you following the weekly slow stitch will know why I said that. Obviously there's no need to pierce holes because it's cloth so we're going to use a needle we'll just stitch through. It's just to keep me on the straight and narrow. Okay so that's the cover marked. So now I can take this same template and fold it in half and then I can use the middle hole to line up on my signatures. Um, now I do like to secure my signatures a little bit with some giant paper clips. And I usually just put one they've got stuck together. Come apart. Oh no, no, it's like one of those games at the fair, you know, where you have to not let it buzz as you go around. You know the games I mean? Done it. Um, and then I just put one at the top on one side. Oops, make sure you catch all the pages. Oh, come here. Sorry, I'm now right up in your face. 
Let me just put you a bit higher. Close your eyes a minute so you don't go dizzy. Don't make it look nice for you and not have the cutting mat lines wonky. Right. Oh, Fred Fred, he's now attacking my feet. Ow! That hurts, that's mean. Go and play with Stell, she's got a fur coat. Right, so I normally just put a paper clip um, at the top on one side and at the bottom on the other. Sorry, there's now wrestling going on if it gets too um, manic. So I'll do that with all of them and then I'll put that in there like that. I'll just show you this quickly and I can go and deal with the wrestling. Um, and then I just punch my hole. One, two. <laughs> Sorry about Stella. Three. So I'll go and do that with all seven and then I'll come back and we'll endeavour to sew it to the cover. Okay, so I've punched all my signatures with the three holes. Um, I should have said, instead of just producing this out of nowhere and calling it a book binding cradle, you don't need one of these. You could just, um, you know, hold it like that, put that in there like that, and then punch through like that. Or if you've got something like an old catalogue, you can open that to the, a middle-ish page and use that sort of little valley for doing that. I made that following a tutorial by Nick the Booksmith. Um, if I remember, I'll put a link down below if you want to know how to make it. And I forget to put the link, please shout at me. Um, but like I said, it's not necessary. Okay, so I've done all that punching. Um, I've got them in the order I want them in. So now I need my thread and my needle. And I've got a big quite a big eyed needle with a sharp point and I've got this, this is vintage waxed linen. If you don't have vintage waxed linen or waxed linen you can use um, like six strands of embroidery floss or cotton pearl or you know something like that. And then I usually take three times, the, am I in shot? I'm sorry. I'm at a weird angle, I'm not, I'm making excuses. Pay attention Catherine. I take three times the height of my signature, two, three, which should be more than enough. And then I always start at the back and work my way forwards. I don't know why. It's just how I do it. So here's my last signature. I shall do one and then I'll do the rest off camera. Only because I find it really hard to do and not get my head in your way. <laughs> um, so I'm going to come from the inside of the signature through the middle hole. And then I'm going to go out through the last space, which I've marked with the blue pen in the spine, in the middle, obviously, in the corresponding place. And then I pull through to a certain point. And then what I usually do, because I've got these handy paper clips here, is just trap the end under the paper clip so it doesn't pull through all the way. That's the theory. We'll see what happens. So. No, because I haven't got any guidelines on the outside. I have to make sure that those, can you see, are lined up. The, two, the hole I just stitched through. And it's floppy fabric, so it's going to be seven shades of awkward. And then I'm going to come through from the back, through my last hole here. Can you see? I've got two lines of holes. I don't know what happened. I must have moved the template. I'm guessing it's that one, but you see it's not too bad, you just poke around, it's, it's like, it is sewing, it's not like sewing, it is sewing. If you kind of come through from the back, you know where you're going to come out on the front. And then up through the top hole in the signatures. Being careful not to get any twists or loops or... You can sort of go back later and, you know. And then you go, you jump over the middle hole, you go down out through the bottom hole, and then through the same place in the cloth, through the little dot you made, and pull it through. Let's catch 
scratching somewhere. Why is it being naughty? Right now. And then you go back, and this might be slightly trickier, through the same hole in the middle that you came out of, or thereabouts. You, the one thing you must be careful is to not pierce through your thread. And then through the same hole in the signature. I hope you can see what I'm doing and it's not going out of focus. Because if you pierce through your thread with your needle, you won't be able to pull it up tight. It'll stop it from running cleanly through. Oh, come on. Always, do you know what? When I'm doing this on my own, I never have this problem. You'll just have to take my word for it. I think it's because of the way I'm standing. And I'm super close to you, but I'm super close to me. I hope it's in focus. Go in through that hole. Cross your fingers, hold your breath. There we go. And then I try and make sure that I come out the opposite side to that centre strand as I went in. That's not the end of the world. If you don't, you can always thread it through afterwards. And then I can get the needle off. And then you lay it down. And you get your two ends. Make sure you're either side of that strand. Because when you knot these two ends, you're going to trap that strand as well. So I pull them up a little bit, somewhat tight. Don't rip your papers. And then hold them together. And I just open up and check that there's no loops anywhere, that it all fits snug. And, there, and on the outside you can give a little twang, like you're playing the guitar. And that's all fine. So then now I just tie a knot. Probably two knots is enough. I usually do three knots. I can't see a thing. I have great I've got new glasses on order. When they come I have great hopes. So my old glasses are awful. I can see a distance away. I'm all right driving, you know, and all that. But I can't see with them up close, so I'm not wearing them at the moment. Three knots. And then I do as well just get my excuse me, my bone folder or the handle of your scissors or something like of that kind. And I just burnish because it's wax thread. And just in doing that you smear the wax around a bit and it just holds the knot still. If you're using another kind of thread that's not waxed you could um, well just trust the knot or you could put a teeny tiny dab of glue and then you can either trim them or leave them the ends or whatever. So that's the first signature sewn in. I'm now upside down. So I'm going to go off camera <laughs> if you don't mind and sew all the others in and then I'll come back and show you when I'm done. Okay, so I'm all bound, all bound in. Um, that's the spine. It's They always end up bigger than I intend. I just make a little notebook, I said to myself, you know, just a handy little notebook, and it ends up that big. But anyway, um, I'm quite pleased with how the stitching looks on the outside. It's quite neat. I'm surprised at myself, and so I think I'll leave it. I was going to put something over. I won't put the spine on. I don't think that really looks very... <laughs> Very good. Um, I keep the spine for something else. Um, so I've bound everything in, like I said. I changed my mind about the front page because I saw this book page that's um, La Violette Blanche, the white violet, but it says tale translated from the Finnish. Um, and I've been chatting with a lot of Finnish people in the comments, and I can't remember the Finnish word for potato. Mm, begins with a P. It's gone. I think it begins with a P. Anyway, I shall write all that in my book. I shall go and look at all the words for potato in different languages and put them in my book. So, you know, it lays quite nicely, even though it's a bit of a monster. I'm going to put it overnight with some a bit of weight on it because I do think it will, you know, close square. It's only slightly alligator mouthish. And I've also put some little tabs. Now I just sort of had to think about what kinds of things I might like to write in. People often, rec often recommend me books to read, so I've got a section books. And these are just little folded bits of paper. They're uh, the offcuts off the ends of some eco print. So they were two and a half inches wide and then I folded them in half. And then I've got a little stamp set, but you could write if you didn't, or you know, cut words out of magazines or something. 
Um, so I just stamped the words on for the different sections. The librarian, I know. So here's books. And I'll just flip through just to show you the different pages. Flip out and textures and colours. Um, and I, I just think it's nicer to write in than a plain white book, but I said that before, you know, <laughs> not everybody would agree. Some people would say it looks like it's been dropped in a muddy puddle. Um, so my next tab is ideas. So it's just a place to keep any ideas that occur. Instead of writing them on backs of envelopes and then they end up being thrown in the recycling. That's the other side of that book page. Um, there's another part of a book page with a nice little motif, but there's still plenty of room to write. And then my next, there's a flip out and a photograph in the middle. And my next heading is people. Sometimes people say, oh, have you heard of so-and-so and such-and-such, -and -such, or you'd really like their work, or, you know, whatever. So if someone recommends a person, or, or a YouTube channel, or something like that, then I've got a place to make a note of a person's name, I thought. You know, you've seen, it's pretty much all the same, I won't go page by page. And then, um, oh, I haven't stuck that one in. I have to stick, I have to get the glue and stick that one in. Oh, then I can show you how I did them. You know, it's just a bit of paper folded and a stamped on the word. And then I'll just glue it there like that. And so poems. Does it say poems? Yeah. <laughs> my, I love when my new glasses come. I tell, I'm telling you now. Poems. Um, <clears throat> more paper, more paper, more papers. I mean, you could, it wouldn't, you wouldn't have to make this as a commonplace book. You could make this for any reason whatsoever. I wouldn't make it for something you were going to stick a lot of extra stuff in. <laughs> Not this thick, anyway. But this idea of a cloth binding. Um, quotes. Nice quotes from people that you come across. Place to keep those. More pages, more pages, more pages. Songs. So that might be a whole song or, you know, the name of a song that you liked particularly or a lyric from a song, something like that. Often my lyrics from a song resonate and you want to write them down somewhere. A nice little motif there. The sketch I did for a pieced quilt based on my horse. Um, um, sayings. So, you know, I'm learning lots of sayings from other countries as well with all the YouTube comments and in the Facebook group. So, and also my granny's sayings, you know, and things like that. So I'm looking forward to going and writing in this. There's the bit of handwritten note that I found. Um, words, cattywampus. <laughs> um, uh, I can't think of any other words now. I, why can I only think of cattywampus? Anyway, you know, this is why I need a book. All the words that people tell me from other other languages and other parts of the world, I can write them all in my external brain. This is like the USB drive for my brain. That's the idea. Um, and then finally, and as in all... My lecturers, when I was at university studying library studies, would have said, Anna, your system's failed if you need miscellany, because you should be able to catalogue and categorise everything. But you never can. You always need miscellany. So there it is at the back of the book. So, and there's the very back of the book. So I hope you like that. Um, like I said, if you don't have old books or you don't want to cut old books up, you could just make covers with cardboard. Um, it's pretty simple construction, I think. Um, and, you know, junk paper or paper that you've tea dyed or whatever. And um, there's my commonplace book, My External Brain. And thank you so much for watching, as always. And it wasn't exactly a cloth tail. There was a bit of cloth in it and a bit of stitching. But anyway, I look forward to you joining me next time for more cloth tails. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.